Thank you watching Market Guru. In, we're in conversation with uh, Gautam Soshorya, head of India Research at UBS Securities. Well, you know, Gautam, you, before we took that break, we were talking to you about the outlook as far as rates are concerned. A follow-up to that is the banking sector. Now, you know, this really has been a space which has got excited in, in the last one month or so. You really see the bank, uh, rather the banking space uh, clearly outperform. Is that a theme when we talk about the financials as one of your top picks right now? Definitely. So that, that remains the uh, most preferred sector for us uh, for, from a strategy perspective. Uh, that's the biggest overweight for us. Uh, and financials are, are the obvious and best beneficiaries of this rate easing cycle. Gautam, but I want to turn this around a little bit. If you're positive on financials, uh, are you then saying that you're not worried about the leverage situation in the economy at this point within corporate India? There was so much talk early June, July of massive deleveraging by these companies. We've seen none of that. Even uh, fundraising has come to a pause in October. Uh, all of that will have repercussion on the banking system. And a lot of PSU bankers that we speak to are still saying that credit offtake is low and they're being skeptical of lending as well. Uh, do you not see that as a trouble point right now? Yes, that, that still remains an issue, an, an overhang, but and that's where the rate easing cycle or the market rate of interest comes in. A simplistic analysis of Iran shows that 100 basis point lower rates in the system, uh, just 100 basis point lower rates in the system implies almost 20% reduction in stressed assets. Uh, so the, the lower rates has an immediate impact on a lot of, not necessarily all, but a lot of the stressed assets. So this lower rates and the reason for our positive stance on banks comes from primarily this lower credit cost, uh, apart from gains on bond book, et cetera, helping recapitalization. Uh, but the big, big driver of a positive stance is this lower credit cost. The other aspect is the, the growth part. So we are definitely uh, not as gung-ho as, as a lot of the market participants are about uh, the pace and scale of growth recovery in India. In fact, our growth forecasts are much lower than where, where the consensus is for the overall market or economy as such. And therefore, we are not as bullish necessarily on banks' credit growth being the driver behind behind a positive stance. It's much more about uh, the, the, the lower rates helping lower credit cost, bond book gains helping uh, recapitalization of some of the banks. And that sets the stage for a more sustainable longer-term growth trajectory for the banking system. Mm. You know, Gautam, the other interesting bit out here is since we're talking, I mean, th that, that's the big call that you actually spoke about in terms of the financial space. The other part out here is when we talk about the entire domestic story in terms of demand, demand plus consumption, these have been some of the you know, themes that have been related from the FI point when they look at the Indian markets. H how is that shaping up right now? Are, are you looking at any trends emerging when we talk about the entire consumption play, entire demand uh, uh, bit as well in, in the Indian context? So again, consumption story in, in, is, is, remains one of the uh, good long-term bets in India uh, for investors, uh, specifically also given that, uh, that this sector also has a, a lot of good quality companies where investors feel comfortable. Uh, having said that, from a near-term perspective, uh, talking to investors, we, we got a sense that a lot of them were expecting a quick and immediate pickup in consumption recovery, specifically in urban India. Uh, and, and around the festive season, and that, that, that's what led to a lot of these stocks and sectors doing well over the last two, three months. Uh, while uh, we have been a slightly more, more cautious on that count, uh, while we do believe in the long-term opportunity and it benefited from the economic recovery, but the timing will be more gradual in our view because we are expecting a more muted and gradual economic cycle recovery. And we actually did a primary survey uh, uh, almost a, a month back. Uh, where we did a survey across India with 1,700 respondents. Uh, and the survey showed us that while there is a lot of pent-up demand across product categories, the timing of that pent-up demand converting into actual purchasing decisions uh, will take time. It will, not, it will take, take, take time of at least a year, maybe two years, because uh, the, the important thing to note is while sentiment has picked up dramatically uh, in, a, in, 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 in the markets, uh, the pickup in actual consumer sentiment is relatively lesser versus what we're seeing in the markets. Uh, but but it, there, there, there is an uptick, definitely. But the other part is income levels have not yet picked up uh, in terms of new jobs being created or new pay hikes having playing out. These things will start playing out over the next one year, two years, uh, not necessarily immediately after, after an election result. 
So that is where our disconnect is from a near term perspective. You could see disappointments uh, in the near term around some of the higher growth expectations uh, in, in these sectors. Now, then these markets had gone a lot tougher for uh, investors at this point. It was different, you know, five months ago where you could throw the dart on the board and you picked a winner. Now it's gotten a lot harder. What are some of the ideas that you're working with that, are, that still remain a top favorite? Uh, you mentioned a few broad theme ideas, but uh, are they still with the large cap? Are you looking at some mid cap or some different themes or subsectors uh, which are making on top of your list right now? So, overriding uh, theme of sectoral based call for us uh, remains banks and oil and gas. Uh, because these two sectors, we, we see a lot of valuation support despite these sectors having done well. They are not trading at higher end of historical valuation ranges or at expensive valuations. And, and we see significant uh, sector specific catalysts and drivers emerging on the macro front. So, banks and oil and gas remains our preferred uh, sectors. And we, we like all the parts of the banking system, uh, private, government as well as NBFCs. Uh, from an ICICI bank, an HDFC bank, to an Indescent bank, to SBI, uh, and to LIC housing and Sri Ram in, in, in the banking space. Oil and gas, uh, our preferred pick remains ONGC and Reliance Industries. Apart from this, mid caps is always more a bottom up uh, approach for us. It is become, we behave, as a top down asset class, we are definitely uh, 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 advising caution over the last two, three months because of the way the valuations have been. And in fact, we have downgraded a lot of our old favorites over the last three to four months, including Havels and uh, TTK. Uh, mothers and etc. just purely because of valuation grounds uh, where we don't feel attractive uh, risk reward at these levels. But individual uh, bottom up ideas still remain where we see valuations being attractive and where we see catalyst playing out over the next few quarters. Uh, and these names where we have a conviction is, is Bajaj Electricals, uh, MCX, uh, Crompton Creeves. Uh, these, these are some of the preferred plays uh, in, in the mid cap space. Mm. You know, so on, on the basis of that, you know, you mentioned about the oil and gas pack. You know, everybody's been talking about the way some of these announcements have been coming in uh, from the government as well. Uh, is that been satisfactory? Because you interact with a lot of foreign investors. What have they been making of all these steps that the government has taken, you know, in, in terms uh, of the reforms? I mean, some of them probably uh, as regard to the coal sector aren't being categorized as reforms per se, but at least regarding diesel deregulation, and you know the steps taken there, is that giving them the required confidence? So that, that was kind of presumed that this, this, these, these things will happen. Uh, okay. So I won't say that this happening is giving them confidence, but uh, it did create some uncertainty over the last couple of months when they were getting delayed. Right. Uh, so it was more a relief when, when the diesel deregulation was announced. So the bigger, bigger, uh, bigger confidence around the oil and gas thing will come uh, when we see uh, more more progress on how they do LPG and, and uh, LPG and kerosene subsidy. Uh, if they are able to successfully roll out and execute on the DBT part, uh, that can that can give a lot of confidence. Because that will have a huge impact also on on a lot of the oil companies' uh, balance sheet and P and L. Gautam, before we let you go, you worked with an 8,000 target, and uh, we're right about there now. What's next in terms of targets? Because you know you seem to have gotten it right. Uh, what going into 2015 uh, can we look forward to? Is there going to be a spurt and what's going to be the big trigger? Is it going to be earnings or is it going to be reform movement? So we, we haven't yet published our 2015 target uh, and we haven't changed our 2014 target of Nifty for 8,000. But uh, we, we remain confident about earnings momentum coming back. Uh, to, so we remain confident about the 15 percent kind of earnings growth for the markets for, for the next two years. Uh, on the other hand, we do think uh, uh, reform announcements or big policy announcements will not necessarily be the big positive catalyst for markets. Uh, lack of it will be a negative, but uh, just them announcing will not necessarily lead markets higher. But those are critical. They will they, be needed for a positive sentiment around the markets. Uh, from here on, I think the more the macro data points and the company earnings momentum, uh, these will gradually become more and more important as they always are for any market. Uh, rather than just headline policy announcements for markets to move up from here.